how do you define the role of a parent? Because that seems like a pretty big label. And a lot of people get given this label, yet they don't, no one got given a job description. Do you know what I mean? Um, but from your perspective with what you know, when you, when you look at the label of a parent, what is the role of a parent? Mm -hmm. I think the role of a parent is to welcome into this lifetime uh, the child that you have been gifted uh, to find yourself in a powerful lead position, not yucky power, loving, nurturing, powerful lead position of the child so that they can be guided through their developmental journey in a way that allows them to come into the biggest, fullest, most extraordinary expression of themselves. And so the parent births the child into the world uh, and then the parent births the child into themselves. And along the way, <laughs> learns a thing or two about um, themselves as a human as well, the parent does. I think the goal of a parent is to uh, make sure that you get out of the child's way, that you pave the path in so much as it is possible, and that you provide a safe um, harbor and also a launching pad for the child as they move through. The goal is that the child gets to actualize into who they are and your goal as a parent is to uh, ensure that that happens. And that comes with a lot of independence, doesn't it, for a child? Yeah, and I'm always really careful about that word because the word independence, we have this like really twisted love affair with it in mm. the realm of parenting um, where we have attached all of this value to the facade of independence. And so when our babies sleep well, we're doing it right. When our kids are well behaved, we're doing it right. When our kids can, you know, manage their routines and figure themselves out, uh, even from the very early stages of life, then we give ourselves this big pat pat on the back as parents parents that we're doing it right. But the reality is our kids don't need independence to be independent. They need dependence to be independent. And so we have to be careful to understand that the path to independence is not through independence. And actually the path to independence, and this is one of the things I've, I've learned through you, is the importance of allowing that to happen organically. And I think we have this misconception as parents where our, go our goal is, well, we want our kids to be independent, but we just kind of get the timeline wrong. You know, instead of it being by the age of 20, 25, we're thinking, how do we get this person to be independent by the age of six or seven? And I think unknowingly and unwittingly, you know, oftentimes we subject our kids to, in most cases, emotional trauma mm. as a result of our pursuit for their independence. Would you agree? Absolutely. And I think the question upon us then becomes, why is it that we have placed such value on our children appearing to be independent? And the answer, I believe, mm. lies within our own subconscious programming. We place value on that because we derive value from it ourselves. We believe ourselves to be more worthy, more valuable, a better parent doing it right if our kids sort of have this um, facade of doing it right. And so we get all hyped up about that, but it really is the wrong thing to be focused on. There you have it, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Unstoppable with me, your host, Kerwin Ray. And please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you get to see all of these interviews in the flesh. Share this podcast with your friends. I would love to hear what you guys think. Thanks for joining us.